Dr. Carrie. Welcome to this week's Vet Ranch Roundup. If this is your first time joining us, a huge, huge welcome. Um, this is Kiki, and Squeaky is running around the office somewhere. He is upset because I don't know why he's upset because we got a new couch. I don't know. He's not a fan. If you want to see all of their antics and learn more about who they are, check out a couple playlists that we'll put up, and that way you can also go all the way back and see how we acquired these two kiddos. All you can see is a caterpillar tail. He's so cute. I don't know how to move it. Kiki, squeaky. And his cute little nails now. He's actually keeping them on. Look. Doesn't show everybody your nails? Yeah? <laughs> He's like, put me down. But anyway, this week has got to be better than last week. I woke up just feeling like we're gonna save some lives this week. Um, our cats went on transport. So let me show you that really quick because it's actually an amazing process that these pilots donate their time to do this. Load it up, ready to go. In scene. We're ready to go to Colorado. Yeah, they get on this amazing looking plane and just zip across uh, to Colorado and then the rescue they're getting them, Angel with Paws sends a driver and picks them up and then they take amazing care of our little babies. So such a wonderful uh, relationship to have. So we're very thankful for them. Anyway, let's just go get started. I heard something about a Maine Coon cat that might be coming our way um, that somebody had surrendered because it had um, luxating knees, luxating patellas, which we'll talk about more. Um, and then, yeah, I can't wait to see this thing, see if he's as big as, as they normally are. So let's go. Vet Ranch, tip of the week. Yeah, also I wanted to show you for our vet ranch tip of the week. First, this is gonna be an alternative to declawing are these soft paws. We've seen us use these a couple times. Oh, that just got really loud, probably sorry. So you've seen us use those soft paws a few times. They're a great alternative, very easy to put on at home with a little bit of help. Sometimes you don't need any, sometimes you need help, but consider that. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to trim your cat's nails. All right, absolute zero fancy human grade nail trimmers. A cat that is borderline uncooperative and only me. So those are good, good things to try. So again, his nails are pretty short because I trim, but here's a longer one. Hold on, frog. I'll show you a side view. So basically, move your little face. I go, oh, buddy, buddy. It's okay. I'm just going to do one, okay? Because this is awkward. So I just go like that. See how you can see that nail? And then, hold on. Look how short I could trim that. It's pretty short. And I just hold them sideways like this, not like that because it's more crushing, just like that. And when your cat's nails are this short, the one I just trimmed, hold on, bud. That short, like that. And like that one's blunted because it was trimmed last week. It's very hard for them to get on your furniture and tear stuff up. So try it. That's your vet range tip of the week. Hope you use it. If you don't want your cat scratching up stuff, you do not have to declaw them, which is actually even illegal in some places. You just need to get them used to trimming them short, putting soft paws on, and or providing them with things that they do want to scratch on. Some cats like up and downy scratching pads, some cats like horizontal scratching pads, some cats like tree mulch, some like cardboard, some like carpet. So it is normal for your cat to want to scratch. And if you do not provide it with things to scratch on, it will scratch your furniture. Trimming nails, soft paws, providing things that are actually appropriate to scratch on, all very easy things to do. So you don't have to declaw. You don't. You don't need to do it. You don't. I try not to take a stand on a whole lot of things or, or you know, express a lot of opinions, but that range tip of the week. I wanted to introduce you guys to a new patient that we have. This kitty's name is Fresno. 
Yes. Which is a really cool name for a cat, I think. I think, I think so it's too. a cool name. I think it fits him well. It does. So I've heard that he's a little a little grouchy. He's probably just a little stressed out about these new surroundings. Um, oh, look. That's behind me. So yeah, that's what that's that's what the word on the street is. But he's a big guy and I think he's just starting to get try to get adjusted to everything. We'll talk about his condition with his knees so you kinda understand that better. But without further ado, there he is. How much does he weigh? Hi. Seventeen pounds. He can be a little grumpy, a little pappy, a little tippity pat. Hi. Are you not liking that dog in here? Absolutely not. Absolutely hate that dog. Absolutely don't pack you. <laughs> Rest no. I know. I went in there to feed him this morning and he's like, Ruger started getting real loud. He like got scared and was like, squat my hand. I was like, okay. Hey. I just trying to feed you. All right. He's like, I am like a cat dog. You gotta earn it. Yeah, we had him out when he was like, we had him out here walking and he was like, oh. He loved being out. So we don't just give it away for free. Oh, he wants to love it, but he can't let himself. Yeah, he he's too proud. It. I just scratched under his chin a little bit and he fell into it, but he didn't want to. He couldn't take it. Oh, he's like, yeah. All right, all right. But you're going to be a butthead after surgery. <laughs> oh my goodness. The handsome. He's so pretty. The handsome. You know, he's not even a big Maine Coon, but he is still a lot bigger than a normal domestic domestic long hair cat. Like his head's big. You don't like it with his eyes? Oh, right. Good boy. Oh, look at those ears. Look at those ears. Sound quite a bit. I like the sound it makes. Okay, I've returned back to the office so I can try to explain Fresno's knee problem. Okay, this is a dog, not a cat, so I'm doing the best I can here. But this is the femur, um, and this is the tibia here. So I'm going to show you that because I want you to see that this is the same. This is the femur here at the top going along to the tibia. So this is a obviously a cut off little bone there. But here's a ligament that runs from the femur all the way down and then attaches to the greater, um, for the tibial crest of the tibia. And in this ligament is, surprise, your kneecap. Cat's kneecap, dog's kneecap, whoever's kneecap. It's in that ligament. So what happens is, this who's normally sitting nice in this little groove. See how there's this nice little groove it makes a track and it runs right there. Sometimes it doesn't line up properly and it goes boop and it slips out like this. And it can slip out medially, which is the inside of the leg, or laterally, which is the outside of the leg. Most little dogs um, and cats have medial slippage. A lot of big dogs have lateral slippage. Anyway, the question is why does that happen? And it's a lot of times um, a conformational thing. So maybe this groove here isn't as deep as it should be. So this is shallow and these ridges are a lot smoother. So it makes it a lot easier for this to come to slide on over and be out. Also, sometimes the legs don't the femur doesn't go straight down into the tibia. We can be a little bit bow-legged. When that happens, maybe you're a little twisted here. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break this. When that's twisted, you can see that this ligament, if this is twisted to the side, then it automatically wants to sit right there. Usually it's a combination of things, multiple of those things that are causing that to be more likely to go in or out. That can cause arthritis, irritation. They don't wanna use their legs. Not common in cats. Um, but I guess common in Fresno. So Dr. Robin's going to come next week. Uh, we may take x-rays. We're going to have to try to get blood then because Fresno is spicy, spicy. Look at your nails. Still looking good. Valentine's Day nails. Yeah. You look so good. Okay, I know. Fancy. Come here, Grim Grim. You're friends? 
They're like, yeah, they are. And they're like, no, he's not. Like, no, we don't like him. No. It's where the food is. Well, he's definitely made progress. Yeah, yeah he's on the cat tree. <laughs> Sir. This tail goes at me. Sir. Yeah. I'm just getting some food. What? Hungry. What? I'm on a diet. I'm a hungry boy. Oh, I didn't do anything. I would love this bird to step up on me, but she will. She will. Someday. I've never tried. Well, she's yelled, but it's just an obligatory thing she has to do. And we've come to that understanding. Yeah, she just yells because she doesn't like it. It's her tension. Uh oh. Sorry, T Bone. That's what you get for sharing a space with a kid. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to pick you up right now. I have stuff to do. All of our respiratory kiddos moved out because they're doing much, much better now. Um, this kitty that stayed with us and didn't go on transport is so freaking cute. I absolutely love her cross eyes. Kitty, 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 kitty. She's still terrified, but purring, more comfy. Isn't she just the cutest? Goodness, pretty girl. Yeah, we gotta think of a name for you. Much better. We did a respiratory panel for the kiddos and I, so we actually tested Beaumont since she was, we're assuming the original carrier and everything is negative, but you can see it tests for Bordetella, adenovirus, distemper, canine herpes, the flu, which is going around in our area. Um, and everything was negative, which is kind of surprising, but that's good. We were worried we were going to have a bad flu outbreak. Beaumont Yeah, 43. Wow. Oh, okay, you big, big headed bully. Look at you. You're crazy. I'm so excited. That's like an English bulldog face. Yeah, yeah I know. Her face, like all wrinkly. 43 now. Boom. Get that logged. This little puppy is brand new. The shelter emailed said they have a mange puppy, which basically just means hair loss could be mange. Um, and asked if we could come and get her, him, her, him. Needs a name, um, but, okay baby. But more than that, he needs his hair back. So we wanna get him adoptable and make sure he's comfortable. So we're gonna do some vaccines, get away, get a stool check. Um, do a skin scraping and see why, if we can figure out why he's hairless. And then get him treated. So he's not nearly as bad as one of my first vet range cases, but I need to give a shout out to Krusty Christy because that video went viral. And this dog reminds me so much of her, just the way they look. So let me put a link to that video too, in case you wanna go way, 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 way back to me about, um, six, seven years ago. Yeah, check that one out. You wanna get out? Well, let's go. Let's go. Hi, Mimi. Hi. It's too big for this scale. Hold on. 8.2 pounds, I doubt that. That's more like it. 16.5. So the skin scraping, I talk about it all the time, but I don't actually really explain it in depth. Basically what we do is we, <laughs> this puppy, this is, uh, that's a crusty <laughs> boy right there. Rusty Chris. 
Ooh. So we basically scrape the skin, try to get a bunch of the dandruff and the flakes and any mites that might be living in the hair follicles mm. and get it trapped in that mineral oil and then look at it under the microscope. This so sounds, this sounds really bad. Oh, I, why are you? I just I, like, I, I, I need gloves. I was like, she's as soon as I felt the crust. Aww. Look at that. Yeah. Bad scabbies. I'll show you guys that I've got bad scabs. You're worse than I thought, friend. Yeah. Poor dude. Ooh, Ooh, poor got big bed. lymph nodes. They're like, we're trying to help here. We're making all the stuff we can. Of course, I got another giant machete type blade, which is not recommended or not needed, but it's fine. I know. No, he's okay. He's probably mostly easy from this infection, I'm hoping. I haven't seen him scratch yet. I'd be really surprised if he had sarcoptic mange, the contagious kind, because usually those dogs are like nonstop itching. I think he's itchy because of the infection. At this I just point. want to give him back. He's like, that's not so terrible. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna show it, baby boy. <laughs> that keeps him happy. Right. Cool. I'm gonna give him an antibiotic injection. All right. We'll go look at this. That's it. See what we have. I'll wash my hands better. Okay what the slide looks like after we're done scraping it's basically an amalgamation of hair skin cells maybe a little bit of red blood cells and mineral oil it's pretty gross but hopefully we'll see something if it's there here's the video of the skin scraping these are all just hair shafts and um skin cells like keratin and everything and i didn't see anything which makes me i mean it's definitely not demodex because that's very easy to see and i feel good about those skin scrapings but sometimes you don't see sarcoptic mange which is contagious so we are going to treat it like a contagious mange um, and go ahead and give a bath and some oral medication <laughs> The shelter emailed and said that they have these little tiny creatures that are too small to be at the shelter, so we can come and get them, and we got them. They have already decided to name them Starsky and Hutch. Oh my goodness. Nice. They are eating solid food, so that's good. Um, and they're in the cat room, which the cats are not pumped about at all. Look at them. They're not happy, these poor little cats. So we are going to get a stool sample, see what kind of worms we're dealing with, get these kiddos dewormed, officially name them Starsky, Starsky and Hutch. Um, I have no idea what their breed is. They're gonna, they could look like anything as they go because they're still in that little nugget, short nosed uh, puppy phase. So. Maybe in a couple of weeks we'll have a better idea, but let's just get started on them. Get weights. <laughs> what? Those eyes are so pretty. So pretty. Oh my goodness. Sing the song of your brethren. Neglected poopers. Our new puppies from the shelter have coccidia, roundworms, and hookworms. Trifecta of grossness. So we're going to fill meds and treat it. Where are you going? 
Oh, so sad, puppy. Y'all go night night. Well guys, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a short week and I don't think I'll be here next week because it's like about to apparently get this winter Texas blast of snow and they're talking about schools being canceled and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm pretty excited, but we'll see what happens. Um, but I would guess that we'll probably have to take a week off because we may just be like skeleton crew coming in to make sure everybody's taken care of, but it's exciting. So that being said, I'll miss you guys, but thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for donating. And definitely, definitely, I'm gonna put up a link for donations. Try to spread the word. And if you're not subscribed, oh my gosh, by all means, please subscribe to our channel because that is how we will get the word out for sure. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you next week. Oh wait, Aww. we'll see you next week. We'll see you the week after next. Bye. Tell, tell me when you're ready. Oh! <laughs> okay, just get them to be still and then I'll take the picture.